Welcome to the Sheridan Report Selection Show brought to you by MyBookie.ag. Uh, go to MyBookie.ag and to Sheridan Report. The great thing is you can take Bobby's picks, Bobby's knowledge, give you a little inside information. Go to thegruelingtruth.net, click on the MyBookie banner at the top of the page, and they will give you up to a free $1,000 cash bonus. Uh, I am your co-host for the Sheridan Report Selection Show. Brought to you by MyBookie.ag. Mike Goodpaster, right now I'd like to welcome in my co-host, the expert on the matter, Bobby Sheridan. How you doing, Bobby? Bobby. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Hey, How you can doing? you hear me, Mike? Yeah, can I can you hear, hear you. You're good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah, you cut in and out a little bit on me during your intro, but I'm glad that we're okay now. Yep, we're good to go. So what are we looking at tonight? It looks like from looking at the Sheridan report that I see, mainly it's NBA. Yeah, it's going to be all NBA tonight, Mike. And, and uh, you know, we're hitting into the conference tournament starting on Wednesday and Thursday when we'll have some really good picks for in the Pac-12 and the Big East. And I'm really excited. I've already got my eye on two or three of those matchups coming up on Wednesday and Thursday. But tonight is just the NBA. And we've got some good games, you know. Some of the landscape, you know, of the NBA, it's, it's, it's good to know kind of where these teams are at. And if you go to the West, Mike, Utah, San Antonio, and the Clippers, and you alluded to this when we talked about the Clippers a few days ago, they are all now locked in the six, seven, and eight spots. They're tied. So that thing can go any way. And Oklahoma City and Portland are just two and a half games ahead of them in the four or five spot. So the Western shakedown is still open, totally open. And, you know, the prevailing theme is wanting to stay away from Golden State. But did you see Golden State last night lost to Phoenix? Did you see that? Yeah. I mean, they're having issues. They're inconsistent. And I think a lot of the stuff you touched on last week with Kevin Durant really plays into that. And I, I – as I said, I think the Rockets are going to win a Western Conference. I think you agreed with me on that. And the crazy thing about that is that could be Golden State being gone in the conference semifinals. It sure could be. And, you know, Houston, we, we, we were on them. You know, we got on that about three, four weeks ago that they were going to be the team to finish strong. And they're making us look good now, Mike. They've got seven or eight in a row. And they're not going to stop. You know, they, they finally got to the three spot and, I don't believe they're going to stop. They may even catch. They may even catch these guys. They might. You know, they're they're four games back. But regardless, um, you know, it's it's going to be a really good finish in the West. And then we've got, and we're on one of those games tonight. That's why I'm alluding to that. I mean, we're going to be on games that have a lot to do with these standings. So we got to keep the fans really knowing what's going on here. Then you go to the East. Again, you've got uh, Miami now is uh, one game ahead. They're in that eighth spot. They're one game ahead of Orlando. And Charlotte, and you got Brooklyn, still kind of Brooklyn guys, and I say guys, I mean the customers, the listeners. Brooklyn is in the seventh spot, and they're kind of holding on at this point. You know, they they built up a little bit of a cushion for the playoffs, but they're holding on. I think they're trending backwards with their level of play, and we're gonna we're gonna get to that tonight too. And then we've got Detroit solidly in that sixth spot, and I think that's where they'll land. So. Eastern Conference is, you know, very exciting also. So let's let's get down to it. Are you ready, Mike? I'm ready. I'm always ready to okay, make some money got... with Bobby. <laughs> it sounds good. And, you know, um, tonight we've got three plays, and I want to give you the, the, the free play just right off the bat. It's, it's the Sacramento Kings. Uh, it says plus two on the report. That was the overnight line. It's already down to a pick em. Yeah, And I think that's the right side. The Kings are, are over the Wizards tonight. It's on the road. But, you know, that's a – the Kings are, are – we didn't just mention them in the in the playoffs. They're three games back, I believe, of that eight uh, for the fans. They are uh, Western playoffs. The Kings are um, four games back of the eight spot. So it's it's not, you know, looking good for them, but – but they still, they're a young team, and they're going to finish strong here. Um, uh, watched them exclusively the last two ball games, and they're getting great, great production from their point guard, Fox, the kid from Kentucky, Darren Fox. And uh, he's doing a great job. And Buddy Hill's a good scorer. And, and 
they have a lot of good inside players, uh, good coach. Uh, I believe they'll go down to Washington and keep their playoff hopes alive and, and with, with a win there. That's a game they have to get on this swing. So it's, it's, a, it's a free play. It's on the Twitter. It's on the, it's on the Internet site that I have, and, and I want to get that out there. So let's go to the, to the top two plays. You know, th- this would be what I call a twin top play. NBA parlay them up together to get some better value between the two and and let's get right on the first one. Okay, the first game tonight that I really like as a top play is the Detroit Pistons. They're going on the road to Brooklyn. And Mike, I uncovered a stat the other day. You're gonna love this. Since February first, the one single player for a month now, when that means when he's on the floor, the Pistons are outscoring their opponent or being outscored. That's what a plus minus is, and players are ranked. So the best plus minus player in the league right now plays for the Detroit Pistons. Any idea? And it's not Blake Griffin. It's Andre Drummond. This guy is playing fantastic basketball school type center just a big guy in the middle that's clogging that's motivated that's getting all the rebounds he's great around the basket he shoots over 60 percent he's he's just doing a great job him and Blake Griffin are combining and then they've got this bench play now they have three guys coming off the bench filling it up you know getting double figures you know this team is just a really solid basketball team right now and and what we talked on the this selection show. We have two in a row. We're going for three. But we talked about the Pistons being the second-ranked team over the last four weeks in a lot of the categories you like to see, uh, you know, a lot of the metrics, a lot of the analytics. So we don't need to go into all those. That's boring. But just know that there's, there's reasons they're getting this done. And they go on the road tonight to Brooklyn, and Brooklyn's a team trending the other way. Uh, they were playing good basketball and were kind of solidly in the middle of the East Conference, and they're, they're slip sliding a bit. And this is a team that's guard, you know, guard heavy. They, you know, they get a lot of their production from the backcourt, and, you know, it just hasn't been as consistent. And so, I believe the Pistons are going to go down there and get this win, and I think we can ride a hot team with Detroit. All right, so I got a question. You're going to get a couple, I got a question couple points here, there. Because right now it's sure. plus two. So is it a better value since you know you think the Pistons may win the game to take the plus two at minus 110, or is it better to take the straight-up win at plus 115? Now, if you were to just bet 20 bucks, you get 18 and change back on the plus two. You bet 20 to win, you get 23 back. You know, Mike, that is a great, great, great question. And, and what I do is, is I tip both. And, and I'll typically take the money line at a little better price than that. Um, I think the two points may come in and save you more times than what it doesn't, meaning that the value on this bet is better to put your 20 and make 24. I can see that. I do think they're going to win, but I think over over a hundred games played out, I think get, taking the two points, maybe getting a push sometimes, yeah. maybe getting a one point loss where you would win. I think in the end that will play out. And somebody that's betting twenty dollars, like a lot of our fans might be, why not? Why not take the twenty four coming back? You know, have forty four in your account rather than thirty eight. I can see that. I but just asked Bobby betting, because I, I used a lower number because it's easier for me to do the math. <laughs> oh no! Well, no, but no, but it's it's, but but Mike, you're dead on because we have twenty dollar betters, we have fifty dollar betters, we have hundred dollar betters, we have. Uh, to finish my point, I think a two thousand dollar better uh, needs to take the two points, and I think a twenty dollar better would be fine taking the the money line. My overall view on that though is, is to take the points. I think over 100 bets, it'll be better off if you take the points. All right. And your next game tonight that you're on for a top play, I think it's Boston at Los Angeles, the Clippers. Boston at Los Angeles. And, you know, um, Boston's trying to do something here that 
is not easy to do. They're trying to sweep a West swing. You know, it's it's a four game deal, and they've already beaten Golden State, Sacramento, and the Lakers. And the and the Laker win was the easiest of the three. Who would have known that a month or two ago? Me, I would have. Sacramento, <laughs> you would, you would have, but I wouldn't, and most of the public wouldn't. But you were on that. You you said the Lakers were going to tank, and you were right. And and um, <clears throat> could have made some money on that fading. I know. I'll take the money fading Golden State. They're three, they're three and thirteen the last sixteen against the spread. So probably the toughest game was Sacramento. You know, of course, Golden State was, but I mean, you know, they got three wins there. And but I'm going to tell you right now, guys, the toughest game wasn't any of those three, and that's what I'm alluding to. It's tonight's game. The Clippers. We talked about this Friday or Saturday on the on our, this show, this debut show, was the Clippers with Detroit are two of the four teams playing terrific basketball at this point with the analytics, the metrics, the points in the paint, the points per possession, the, you know, the, um, the bench scoring, the, the rebounding advance, you know, all this, these, these stats that are out there, the Clippers are doing a great job right now. And, and it's showing, you know, they're winning they're They're got themselves tied now, six, seven, and eight in that West. And this is going to be the toughest game. It's, it's very difficult to come to the West and, and sweep a four game, there and, and Boston's going to be motivated to do that, and they're playing improved basketball. But but are they? You know, um, again, the Lakers and Golden State wins to me are, are are not as impressive as we thought they might have been. And and I think tonight is the acid test for them, and they're going to get beat. Uh, the, the Clippers are are really doing an outstanding job. You, you know, they shoot the ball from the foul line so well. They get a lot of points from there. They're coached so well. Um, their bench is outstanding. I mean, Lou Williams comes in off the bench. He's going to get the sixth man a year award again. This might be his third or, or fourth. I don't know. The guy fills it up. He scores 30 a night off the bench. Montrese Harrell. You talk about, this is Dennis Rodman of 2019. This guy just is a bull, gets every rebound. These guys are bench players. And they come in and, they, and they, they're providing a spark. And they're doing a great job. The Clippers playing great. Win the night there, a point and a half, two points as well. So, I love it. I love those two. Those, those two how, top how plays tonight. Now? What if you were to bet those two and then maybe throw a parlay, especially if you're going a smaller bet and you parlay and just bet the Pistons and the Clippers to win because when you combine them, you get almost six to one odds. Yeah, I mean, I I I think that's a great a great plan. Um, myself just to kind of help people uh, what i will do is i will have straight bets on all three and when i say a top play that that usually means well what that means is uh, about double the amount about you know sometimes maybe yeah. a little more of what you would put on a straight on a, on a regular play so let's say i'm a hundred dollar better i put a hundred dollars on the kings i put two 250 on the pistons two 250 on the clippers maybe 300 and then i i do a three-team parlay with all three and I do a stronger. If I hit all three, I sweep. That's a huge payout. Yeah. Because I'm getting the three-team parlay pay as well. And then if I if I hit the top two plays, it's going to come down to those two. If I split, I'm not really hurt that badly. And if I hit both those top two plays, I'm crushing for the night. And, and it's, you know, when you're picking well and you're in a, in a groove, it's very rare you would lose both. So I think you can – you know, wager both those top plays, hit them both, and uh, hit a nice parlay. A two-team parlay pays thirteen to five, so fifty bucks will get you an extra one thirty. That's where you can really make the value. So maybe, maybe a hundred dollar better would put two two fifty on the Pistons, two two fifty on the Clippers. Maybe a fifty par between the two. Maybe a hundred on the Kings. Throw them in a parlay with the other two, and that would be a way you could kind of play those three games. All right, but there's Bob. other ways to do it, though, Mike. There's other ways to do it, and I, as well, playing it easier and simpler would be to not play for some of the bonus, you know, some of the parlay bets, and just maybe put her on the Kings, three hundred on the Pistons, three hundred on the on the Clippers, and just call it even right there. No parlay money out there, and try to hit two out of three. You know, all hit right. all three, you're good. What else we got for today, Bobby? Anything else? Yeah, I want to let you know, um, I have a program on my TSR report. 
TSR stands for the Sheridan Report, and it's called the Early Risers. And uh, I'm saying this for some of our new fans that might be listening to this new show. Um, the Early Risers, I, it's kind of a nickname I came up with because a lot of these tennis matches and these pro golf tournaments, they, they start early in the morning, you know, uh, sometimes from different countries, you know, and so it's maybe three in the morning or six in the morning. And when you wake up, these, some of these might be final already. So I called it the Early Risers. And the attendance, the professional tennis ter- tour is uh, is on the West Coast. So it's not early risers for this tournament, but typically it is. And I'm and I'm out at the uh, ACP tournament this today and tomorrow. I'll be catching a few of these matches. I enjoy watching these guys when I can, and they're in my neck of the woods now. Uh, they're in Indian Wells, Wells, California, which is near Palm Springs, about probably 20 minutes drive from Palm Springs, and great weather out here, and the players are out here, and I'm I do wager the ATP, and and I want to just let the fans know that return on investment, that ROI, uh, for let's just say every hundred dollars invested in each of the sports, my number one sport, and it is every year, is baseball. I'm going to urge all of you guys to get on the baseball report with me coming up next month. But number two is ATP, better than the NFL and better than the NBA, and I've been hitting over sixty percent on those two sports for a long time. But the return on investment, because it's money line wagering, there's no point spread involved. So the money line wagering is, uh, you know, instead of a point spread, it's it's like we just talked about. Don't take the two points, take the plus 120. Well, that's what it is for tennis. That's what it is for baseball. And I really have a handle on it. You know, and what I try to do is, is I, I, I get you on underdogs that are going to exceed their expectations. So I'm always, I'm never laying money on the underdogs. I'm always just, I mean, on the on the money line bets, I'm always taking the value, and the and the 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 idea is there to hit fifty to fifty five to sixty percent of your underdog plays. You're making money, and you know when you can put some of them together in a parlay, you're really making money. So, um, ATP has been a very good thing. Now, yesterday, you know, wasn't a good day for us, but all week we won four of the five days. Yeah. You know, and now we're starting a new week. So, I got two matches. Um, going in the early risers club from the ATP Indian Wells, which the tournament is called BNP Paribas Open. And I got two matchups today. They're both underdogs, of course, because we just talked about that. One of them is a guy named Nishioka. He's plus a dollar thirty-five. That goes at two fifty Pacific over young star, young Canadian star, who I've made a lot of money on over the last couple tournaments. Augur Aliasame has got him losing today. He's a favorite. So we've got Nishioka beating him at plus to, to Jerry. I don't know how to pronounce it. D J E R E. He's plus a dollar five, so almost even money over a guy named Kex Manovic. And so we've got Nishioka and Dejeri going today in the ATP. And we've got you covered all the time here on these ATP matchups. And that's all part of the report, which can be bought for ten dollars daily or fifty for the month. All right, Bobby. Anything else? No. Well, yeah. N- nothing betting wise. Uh, Going to be a great week coming up as we add the conference tournaments. But uh, I do have it on this day, Mike. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over real quick. Um, we talked about on um, Surviving Advance Show. I don't want to get into it on our show. But we talked about 1986. The NFL adopted instant replay. And uh, we got into a heated debate. So for the, some of the fans that may have missed that into that show, that'd be a good one to listen to. Uh, we got into a debate on that, 1986. But let's go another one. And I know the grueling truth is added a wrestling show. <laughs> what do you know about 1941 Bronco Nagurski? I mean, the great ex-NFL player, right? He, 1941, he Ray Steele in Minnesota. To become a wrestling champion, what do you know anything about that, Mike? Uh, I, I know he was a great wrestler. He was a great wrestler at college too, at the University of Minnesota, like nineteen twenty-seven to twenty-nine. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. So in this day, nineteen forty-one, Bronco Nagurski beats Ray Steele in Minnesota to become a wrestling champion. That one, that one really kind of got me. And and uh, and then nineteen eighty-six, the same day as we talked about the NFL adopting the instant replay rule, Mike Bossy was the first NHL player to score 50 goals in nine straight seasons. And he did that with 
correct? With the what? You cut out there. Pretty sure he did. With, oh, he did it with the New York Islanders. Is that correct, Mike Bossy? Yeah, I mean, he was the probably the main player on that team that I think went to like six Stanley Cup finals in a row from 80 through 85 and won five consecutive. And they didn't lose until 1985 when they lost to Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers, who then went on a run for the next five or six years. So, yeah, that, that sport was pretty much dominated there. And the Bronco, Bronco Nagurski one. <clears throat> All right. I, I've heard a couple really funny stories about Bronco Nagurski. And, and the one was a story about Nag- Nagurski scoring on a gallop against the Washington Redskins at old Wrigley Field, knocked two linebackers in opposite directions, uh, stomped a <laughs> defensive back, crushed a safety. Then he bounced off the goalpost, cracking, and he ran into Wrigley Field's brick wall, and he cracked the brick wall. And on returning to the huddle for the extra point, he reportedly looked at the players and said, that, guy, that last guy hit me awfully hard. <laughs> Talking about the Wrigley Field wall. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> he he was a character. Uh, he was a great athlete, and of course, as you said, he was a, he was a major box office attraction, professional football, and then later professional wrestling. I think he's in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, hit his peak in the late '30s. I think he won so uh, he beat a guy by the name of Dean Deaton. I think towards the late '70s to win a portion. Um, it was called the National Wrestling Association because if you remember back then, before you get Vince McMahon and the WWF, which is now the WWE, most of this wrestling was a regional sport. And Vince McMahon made his billions off of basically come in, coming in and combining all of these separate entities and making them one big global organization which in the mid-'80s really took off, blew up. I remember, I think there was like a Saturday morning show where like a wrestling show every Saturday morning. It even got to the point where it it got big enough by the mid-'80s that you had Saturday night's main event where you'd see Hulk Hogan or the Junkyard Dog or Nikolai Volkov, all these guys, and and they would give, like in a February, they would Saturday Night Live would take off a week, and then you'd have the Saturday night main event. Um, Mean Gene Okerlund, who just recently passed away, was an announcer in that. And Jesse the Body Ventura, who's done just a little bit of everything, including being a wrestling champion and the governor of Minnesota, which he won as an independent, which is almost unheard of. But that'll tell you the power that a professional wrestler has. E- even today, professional wrestling is huge. Uh, we, we've got a show called 400 Court, Court Street that Sean Delaney does on the net, just about the history of Evansville Pro Wrestling. And it was three of our top four shows last week. I mean, he got probably 25, 30,000 listens for the week. But, yeah, I mean, wow. Rocco Nagurski is a legend. He's a legend not too many people remember. And it may have just given me an idea for an article because I haven't seen much written on Bronco Nagurski. But he was a great athlete because even though wrestling may not be on the up and up, I don't think you can deny that those – well, it's not. It's not. It may not be. It's not. But <laughs> when you look at it, uh, <laughs> you can't deny that they are spectacular athletes. With the, I mean, athletic ability, you don't get a whole lot better than that. So, yeah, Bronco Nagurski was a special dude. And instant replay is a good thing. But anything else? No doubt about it. <laughs> no, that's it, Mike. And hey, look, I hope they. You know, a bankroll is really important, um, you know, uh, and, and to bet a percentage off of that bankroll so that you can. What you're trying to do is you're trying to just slowly and surely build that bankroll up. And that's really the best, safest way. So if any of your listeners are thinking about getting on board, you know, and they want to, they can put a couple hundred dollars in or 500 or a thousand or whatever they can first start with, then you would maybe bet, you know, 5% of that, 5% of that. And then once you're building it up, you can build up your, your, your bet. And that's how you make money. Um, if you're coming in for the quick hit on a Monday, you know, that's, Hey, I've been there back in my day, you know, I didn't have a lot of money and I, stuck 500 in and I was all in with that 500 and trying to triple it up. And I feel you. And, and, and that's a, you know, I know there's some of those out there and, and I'm hoping we go two and O tonight, but. Uh, 
basically like with anything, do this for Bobby, a living is you just got to be patient yeah you got to be patient if you're going to do it for a living you got to have a bankroll and play off of your bankroll but but either way I'm, I'm there for for that guy the other guy too you know and i because i've been there and i'm let's let's hit it tonight let's hit that those three teams but let, let's get them let's get that top those two top plays in and and uh, I think they both could hit. You know, I really do. So I think we're on the right side of both of those. All right. Sounds good, Bobby. Remember, we are brought to you by mybookie.ag. Go to thegruelytruth.net. Click the banner at the top of the page. You will get up to a free $1,000 cash bonus, according to what you deposit on your first deposit. Um, so we're going to wrap it up. We will be back live tomorrow at 2 o'clock for another exciting adventure with Bobby. And we're all going to get a little bankroll off of doing this. So make sure you check out mybookie.ag. If you go straight to the website, you can post or put the promo code TGT50N. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. We'll be back tonight live at 11 o'clock for Inside Boxing Daily with me and Jeremiah Pricer. So without any further ado, I want to tell you all that we can be heard on iHeartRadio, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find The Grueling Truth. So, for Bobby Sheridan, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.